Praise the Lord. I greet everyone in the name that is above every other name, the name Jesus. My name is Saint Grace. I trust God that you and your family are doing well. Father, in the name of Jesus, minister to your children. Open the eyes of their understanding to know you through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, every spirit-filled believer must and should know that the Bible is no ordinary book and that we need the help of the Holy Spirit to decode, decode, and get revelational knowledge to understand and know what God and our Lord Jesus Christ wants for mankind. So get ready to unlearn all the old stories which doesn't add up or doesn't make sense that we've been told from our various former churches or the bishops and the prophets and the pastors have told us that it is the truth in the Bible. Beloved, just as Apostle Paul advised and admonished his son in Christ, the young man Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Steady to show thyself approved unto who? God. These Bible teachings and everything, you are not doing it for any man, but that you will be approved by God. You will be approved by God. A workman that needed not to be what? Ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And that is what we are doing in this end time. Rightly dividing. We are petitioning the scriptures to know where everything belongs to and how it all falls into place in our lives. Be ready to learn the truth. This is a series to build your solid foundation in Christ Jesus so that we can be complete in Christ, knowing who we are. Amen. So I want us to decode the unanswered questions about who God is, why he created the universe and everything we see. Why are we created like God himself? Why he made angels who are angels? What are their duties? Why good and evil exist? And many questions that run through a young believer's mind. So last time I spoke somewhat about angels, their bad side. Now let's look at the overall angelic community. When did God create angels? When did he create angels? Beloved, trying to determine when God created the angels is somewhat very tricky because anything God did before the foundation of the world puts the event outside of time itself. So time and space are characteristics of our world, the world that you and I live in, not God's. He is not limited by the hour, the day, the years, as we are limited. In fact, the Bible tells us that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. When you read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, it is there. And Moses also said the same thing in Psalm 90, verse 4, I believe. He says that a day is... A thousand years is like a day that has just gone by. And so he is not limited by time. He's timeless. He's limitless. Nothing limits our God, the creator of the universe. We do know that God created the angels before he created the physical universe. The book of Job described the angels worshiping God 
as he was creating the world. And so Job chapter 38, verse 4 to 7, he says, Where were you when I laid the, the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand, who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. This is a question God Almighty asked Job. The time that he was about to redeem Job. And Job, the character Job in the Bible, is a typology of Christ Jesus who was to suffer for mankind, tormented by the devil, and later redeemed the world through the power of God Almighty. Amen. God permitted Job to be tormented by the devil. God separated himself from himself to come and save the world. Satan tempted Jesus 40 days, 40 nights. Satan tempted Jesus through the spirit of Pharisees in every way possible. Satan tormented Jesus and put him to death. Jesus peacefully laid his life, gave it up, and the devil thought he could keep it, but he couldn't. And that's why we say, for death could not hold him what captive. So Job was battered, you know, by the devil in every to the bone, even his bone was sore. He battered him to his bone. The, the enemy pierced Jesus' rib, pierced him in the rib. So Job was a typology of Jesus Christ to come. Anyways, that's another lesson for another day. So Job 38, 4 to 7, we understand that angels were worshiping God Almighty when he was creating the physical universe. If we consider the function of angels, we might conclude that God created the angels just prior or before to the creation of mankind because one of their duties is to be ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 talks about that. We also know they existed they existed prior to the Garden of Eden. They existed prior to the Garden of Eden. Because Satan, who was formerly the angel Lucifer, was already present in what? In the Garden in his fallen state. However, because another function of angels is to worship God around his throne. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 to 14 speaks about that. They may have been in existence billions of years as we reckon time before God created the world. Worshipping him and serving him. But do understand that. Some were created to worship him. Some were created to destroy. Isaiah 54, 60, God said, I have created the destroyer that destroys. So although the Bible doesn't, does not specifically say when God created the angels, it was sometime before the world was created. Whether this was a day before or billions of years before, again, we cannot be sure of that. Why did God create angels? Why? Why did he create them? The creator himself 
is so powerful. The creator himself is so powerful and glorious that he cannot be approached in person by human beings. He alone had immortality dwelling in the light which no man can what approach unto whom no man has seen nor can see. And that is in first Timothy chapter six, verse 16. So nobody can approach God. Nobody. So angels do not have man's shortcoming. No human can approach God and angels they are not in the form of human beings or they don't have the shortcomings of human beings you know they weren't created with dust and can therefore act for god and represent him when communicating with men and women they bridge the huge gap between the holiness and perfection of god in heaven he lives above the heavens and the shortcomings of dying people on this planet. So we die, but angels, they don't die because they are spirit beings. Angels were made immortal. That is, they never die. Yeah, eternal quality was spoken of by Jesus when he said, they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto what the angels and are the children of god being the children of the resurrection when you read luke chapter 20 verse 35 to 36 that is what jesus said so angels they don't die Jesus was saying that in the same way as angels, the children or the sons of God, which is you and I, live forever and are of one gender. So those who will be called the sons and daughters of God when Jesus returns will also live forever and will not marry. Amen. So we are not going to heaven to marry. Those who think they are, when they get there, they are going to marry their wives and whatever. <laughs> we are not going there to marry. We will be of the same gender. There will be neither marriage anyway. We are, we are all married to Jesus and that's it. So there are good reasons to believe angelic beings exist. Even without a specific description of these beings in the Bible. And God's word provides us with much detailed details about their existence and nature but another question still lingers why did god create angels in angelic beings you know exist in the first place angelic beings were created for much the same reasons humans were created they were created to love god those angelic beings who continue to love god are still angels so God created angelic beings, some to love him perpetually and others who the, uh, we call fallen angels or oh, they, they fell away. Not that they fell away, but they, they were created in that manner to fall away. They are, they, they cannot be termed category as angels but demons they've turned demons just as satan has become you know demon he's also devil devil satan is the same thing devil satan is the same thing his name used to be lucifer and his demon he wasn't in in a in a good way and turned bad he was prideful Right from the onset, right from beginning, he was a murderer. Right from beginning, so Lucifer attained a new name. So being a Lucifer didn't make him right with God. He was Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning. He was a liar from the beginning. 
John chapter 8, verse 44. So, angels serve an important purpose. They are used by God to reflect his love for his children. So, let's take a look at the love angels express for God. Let's take a look at the love angels. And I'm speaking of those God made perpetually to be committed to him and to love him. They love to praise and glorify God. Angels love to pray, praise, I mean, giving praise, and to glorify God. This attribute of the angelic order separates angels from the demons. Those who still adore God are the angels. Those who reject him are the demons. There is an entire group of angels who, whose only job is attending to God. So in the heavenly realm, where the true heavenly realm, not the one possessed by Lucifer and his demons, there are cherubims and seraphims. They specifically attend to God. So there are angels that are doing other duties. There are multitude and multitude of them. They are doing other duties. Not all of them are always before the presence of God's servant. We have the ministering spirits that are sent on earth. So they are always back and forth. And that is why Jacob saw them going back and forth on the earth. So the cherubims and the seraphims are always before God. And they are very powerful. In fact, one of those powerful angels was the one who Moses really was dealing with. But the Bible used the word Elohim. And so people think that Moses actually saw God face like physically because that was the actual word that God spoke to uh, uh, to Moses face to face. No, nobody can see God and live. Nobody can see. That is the only expression they can write in the Bible so that you can understand that in fact there was a communication that was like verbatim. That was like close communication. That's why he said he spoke to him face to face, just like a man speak to his friend. There was a powerful angelic being. God put his name on that uh, angel. And so his name was called Elohim, the same as God, but he wasn't God. He wasn't God. Such was Melchizedek. Melchizedek wasn't Christ. Many pastors believe that Melchizedek was Christ who came and uh, no. If you do that, you, you you are going to have a belief like the Hare Krishnas, that belief in reincarnation, that human beings, we are born and reborn and all those nonsense. No. No. Jesus Christ didn't come and then came back again. No. So, there are some powerful angelic beings that God impose or uh, impute into them his name that they act on behalf of God and so they they get the attribute of Elohim I'll speak about that in another lesson Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 to 12 it says and I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was multitude of multitude uh, the word actually was my rights of my rights and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing so there are multitudes of them and each various you know group have different functions that they do in the actual heavenlies that belongs to God himself they love to be in his presence. That's another fact. Angels love to be in his presence. The presence of God is what we are talking about. So angels are constantly returning to the presence of God. When humans, when humans get a glimpse of angels, they are often still radiating the glow of God's glory. They are still white from being in his presence. You know, a whitish appearance in much the same way Moses was white after being face to face with 
God, meaning face to face with that angelic being that God imposed his name on, was so powerful and so glorious on the mountain when he received the Ten Commandments. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. He said, in the midst of the living beings, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches darting back and forth. Among the living beings, the fire was bright and lightning was flashing from the fire and the living beings ran to and fro like the bolts of lightning. Those were the angels. They were called out of fire. Those were the angels. Angels, another fact is that angels love to carry God's message. Angels love to carry God's message. Amen. Angels are also in love with God's law. Angels are in love with God's law, meaning God's commandment. So the apostle John said, we demonstrate our love for God when we obey his law. First John chapter five, verse three. Angels understand this principle that they demonstrate their love for the almighty, the sovereign God. When, when they, they do his word, they do his bidding. They love God's truth and they love to share it with others. So Hebrews chapter two, verse one to three says, for this reason, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unutterable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So this Hebrew scripture brings a revelation here that the commandment, which is the, the word of God given to Moses, wasn't God himself who gave the law. It was that powerful angelic being that gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. He said, if the word spoken through angels proved unutterable, meaning that word the Lord gave, the, the law the Lord gave was unchangeable. And those who couldn't obey it, those who transgressed, meaning they sinned, received a just, a fair judgment and punishment. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So he's talking about what Jesus, what the blood has come to do, saving us from the damnation of the law. Given how much angels love God, it shouldn't surprise us they would reflect this love on us as God's created children. God loves those who have repented and given themselves to him. This is why the angels also love the saints, the saints of God. Another fact about angels is that they love us enough to appear to us in our own form. Angels, the, the, the genuine ones, of the one from God himself, they love us enough that they, they like to take our form and appear to us. Angels are immaterial, meaning they are immortal. They are spiritual beings. But when they appear, when they appear to humans, they typically take on our form. Why would they do this? Perhaps it is because they love us and want to connect with us as created beings. They want to connect with us as created beings. One thing is clear, however, angels never appear to wicked people. Angels, I'm talking about the, the, the righteous angels, the true ones. They don't appear to the wicked people. Those who are doing wicked, angels of God don't appear to them. Why is that? God sent angels to the saints of God. To the saints of God. Most times. If an angel of God is to appear to uh, a 
wicked person. They might be striking that person down. They may be striking the person down. Or they may be warring, meaning warfare with that wicked soul. Because they, they don't have mercy. They, they have no emotions or whatsoever. They just act according to the word of God giving them. They just act according to the word of God giving them. And so when you read Numbers chapter 22, the angel nearly killed uh, uh, the prophet uh, uh, Balaam. He nearly killed. He nearly, if, if not for the donkey, he nearly killed him. He nearly killed him. And God had to open his spiritual eye to see the angel with the sword. They don't show up. He wasn't going to appear to that false prophet. Balaam wasn't a, a good prophet. He was a false prophet. So he was going to strike him with a sword. And the donkey saw it. The animal saw it. And he stopped. And so angels don't appear to wicked people. Unless on a, a specific assignment that God want that person to know. So let's take note of that. Angels are God's messengers. The good ones is what I'm talking about. Invisible except when they assume a shape to appear before human beings. We don't know what they look like except they appear as grand, you know, ale inspiring beings. Not the chubby, sweet faced infant in old artworks. You know, some, you know, the Roman Empire and all those folks, Greeks, Greeks who paint a baby, a chubby looking baby with feathers and say that it's an angel. That's not an angel. That is not an angel. People in the Bible and Christians of later times usually speak of angels as magnificent beings, impressive figures who inspire, you know, but also give comfort. We imagine angels to be very beautiful, winged beings dressed in white cloaks and almost glowing with an aura of a body engulfing hollow. While that may be true, God often sends them as invisible, invincible. You know, they are not visible to the eyes. Or in a special clothing to blend in with their surroundings as they perform their assigned duties. Are these angels our loved ones who died? No way. Angels are not our great great grandmother and great great auntie and and our parents or somebody that we loved a friend that we loved who died no angels are creations of god we as humans are not angels and neither are our diseased loved ones none of our dead uh, loved ones family members or friends are angels they don't turn <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah we are not angels we are human beings to enlighten you an angel might be you know an angel may come to you in in any form like a smiling lady a bent old man a person of a different ethnicity it could take any form they could take any form genesis chapter 18 verse 2 to 5 it says and when he lifted up his eyes and look, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. Please let a, a, a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a piece of bread that you may refresh yourself. After that, you may go on since you have you have visited your servant. And they said, so do as you have said. Angels took on the form of human beings and Abraham saw them. And he entertained them, gave them bread to eat and they ate it. You know, and I personally, I have seen an angel. He didn't have a wing, no wing, an angel, very well built being 
I opened my the first day I saw I opened my closet. I that was in 2014. I opened my closet and he was standing right there. And I was like, Whoa, what are you doing here? You know, he said, I'm on duty. He's on duty, he's keeping charge over me. I said, Wow. So they they can be they is it, is beautiful when you see them it's very beautiful so we should take note of that amen